morning, everyone. Uh, I hope all of you are having a wonderful time, great semester. Uh, once again, I'm here to deliver a sermon for you this morning with a theme called Focus. How many of you have a strong concentration during class time? Oh, <laughs> very honest. I see one hand there. <laughs> uh, I think concentrating on class lectures or during our reading time to have a strong focus is not a simple task. I have three practical questions to ask. Let's read it all together. Number one question. This is a, a closed question, yes or no, but I don't want you to answer for me. It's just a question that we needed to ask ourselves. Are we easily distracted? Are we strong enough to say no to any kind of distraction during class? Of course, I'm focusing on classes, but this also works generally for life. People sometimes can get easily distracted because of very simple matters. Second question, let's read it together. One, two. What can hold us back from improving our skills? Human, human skills are to be developed. So sometimes there are issues that can hold us back from improving or maximizing our skills and potentials. And the third question, how can we live a more fulfilling life? Everybody wants to have a fulfilling life, happy and successful. We want to achieve every task given for us. But the question is, how can we do that? What are some of the skills that we needed to develop to be able to have a fulfilled life in our practical life? Here I brought some of the potential distraction points as a student or generally as a human being. Let's read it. One, smartphones, games, thoughts, daydream, letting the mind wander. Sometimes our physical body is in the class or in, in a meeting or somewhere in a specific place, but our mind is wandering here and there. We just give ourselves the liberty to wander in different kinds of thoughts. Of course, I know we are not allowed to have uh, smartphones, but you know everybody, almost everyone um, has a smartphone once in a while that distracts our focus during our study time or when we do homeworks or when we read. Focused life in general and specifically also concentration during class lecture. So when I say focused life, generally every human being, even if we are not student or even if we are not going to classrooms, we still need to focus in our responsibilities and the task we are doing. Uh, specifically also because all of you here are students and teachers, we needed to also concentrate during class time, especially when teachers are giving lecture, when there is a discussion, when we are reading textbooks or doing our homeworks, we needed to concentrate. But I told you it's not easy task. Loss of concentration is a big challenge for almost everybody why we lose our concentration. Previously, we discussed about distraction. Now you see here, there are also internal things that are happening. One, stress. When our mind is stressed because of many things. Well, you can still ask what, what makes us stressed. That's another discussion. Say, for example, if we have some relationship problem or when we are not able to find what we desperately wanted. Lack of sleep. Sometimes I ask my students, what time did you sleep at night? And most of the time, the answer is almost after midnight. Lack of sleep, daytime, during class, it will affect us to have a very weak concentration during class time. Even if we are staying awake, our concentration will be weaker. Therefore, 
this lack of sleep uh, causes loss of concentration. Inadequate diet and multitasking. When we try to do so many things at a time, we lose our focus. When I say focus, I am referring to, or the definition of focus simply can be undivided attention. This undivided attention has the quality of transforming our life. It also adds or increases the quality of our life. That's why we wanted to have undivided concentration on a specific things that we are doing at the moment. In order to explain more about the value of focus and also to explain the characteristics of focus, I brought two analogies here. One is the analogy of light. And the second one is the analogy of camera lens. And then of course we use these two analogies in order to understand how concentration for our mind is very much important or even concentration in life. The first one is light. As you all know, light can be concentrated or scattered. These are the two natures or the two uh, characteristics of light. One, it can be scattered. It can be all over the places. And the second one, it can be concentrated. First, when white light is coming from the sun, when it enters into the Earth's atmosphere, something happens. What happens? The light gets scattered. That's why we get light everywhere, daytime. But the question is, why the light is scattered? It's because when the light sprays in all directions, when it enters to the atmosphere, it scatters to all directions because of the dust particles in the atmosphere. The light comes and then the contact will scatter. And then what happens? Light scatters. That's what we call, the phenomenon is called scattering of light. And then the light will have the potential to shine in the darkness. The energy is the same. The amount of the, ener the energy is the same when we concentrate or when we scatter. Without adding or reducing the amount of energy, when light is scattered and concentrated, the function becomes very much different. This one is when light is scattered. The second one is when light is concentrated. What happens? For example, there is a, a concentrated solar technology system where there are different kinds of equipments used like what? Mirror or lenses. And then these mirrors and lenses will, will have a tracking system. And then this tracking system, it focuses a large area of sunlight onto a small area. You've seen there are a lot of uh, solar, solar systems nowadays in Korea. If you go to Paju, many roofs have this solar system. Then the con concentrated light becomes what? Heat energy, or it becomes a heat source. That becomes a conventional power plant known as solar thermoelectricity. In fact, if the concentration level is too much concentrated, you know what happened? The light will have the potential to become a laser sharp. That means you can cut using that laser sharp a very uh, high density mass metals because the concentration is very much powerful. Then the light will have the power to be uh, like a sharp laser. What is the difference? It's only if it is scattered, it just lights. When it is concentrated, it will have the power to even penetrate anything impenetrable. So, another second uh, analogy is uh, from a camera lens. Maybe some of you are much better than my understanding of some cameras. I'm not a professional, just a common person. I brought one as an example here. Uh, the name is uh, uh, Lika, Lika Semalux lens. Very much expensive. Can you guess how much it is? 1,000. No, it's even more expensive. Two, four, six, 10, 15. It's about $16,000. If you check on coupon, it's all, almost like a 
chon pal big mano in Korea. Very much expensive. Now, how do people use this one? Even if we are common people, we are not professional cameraman or person, out of focus images are easily recognized by any common people. Sometimes when people post out of focus picture, we can just easily recognize that it's not focused, right? But to focus, the camera person needs to know what is the focal point. You need to know how to focus your camera on a specific object so that you will have a very clear picture. You can see here, the image, the, the, this one is created uh, at the low resolution of 72 dots per inches, per inch. And the second one here is 350 dots per inch. And you can see the difference. And this happen, happens, one, when you have really strong camera lens that will have a very strong focus. Then, not only light and also camera, our brain, our mind also needs to focus on the subject matter given so that you will have a very clear understanding of that idea or discussion that you are engaging with. Training brain to focus is a matter of practice. It's not by birth, but it's by practice. If we avoid time killers, some of the electronic devices that I have mentioned, or any other distracting activities, then the brain will be trained to focus. I believe everybody now is focusing, right? <laughs> okay, thank you. There are some uh, activities or some things that are occupying our mind and they are kind of attention killers. Concentration is an ac academic skill. Every student needs, every human being needs to concentrate so that we may maximize our potential, so that we may understand and even reflect on the ideas that we are engaging in our class or in our reading. Focus is an essential skill that will enhance our performance during classes and on our tests. I have seen a couple of students, not here, but some other places, who fall asleep during exam time. Now, this is a very practical question. Would you please, all of you, read this question? Okay, we said okay. Yes, concentration is very much valuable. We said it's very important, especially for students. Now, the question is, how can we develop, how can we enhance our concentration? How can we increase the level of our concentration? I brought a lot of things here. The first thing is, please read it, what is it? Prepare. Before you come to classes, before you engage on the actual DT given to you, you need to prepare. That preparation will increase because it's an effort done by yourself. It will give you a very strong bond with the subject matter and with your, with your mind. The second one, what? Get enough sleep. If possible, try to sleep earlier and wake up early. If we are too late at night, obviously daytime, we will lose the power of our concentration. This is very natural. We fall asleep because we are sleep deprived. The third one, sit in a proper location. Location also matters. If the room is too hot or if it is too cold, if you are too remote from the teacher, or if you are too close, therefore you need to know the proper location, the proper distance, so that you may not easily be distracted during class time. And the, third, the fourth one, actively participate. Use all your senses, these five senses, and engage during class time 
so that you may be able to focus. Think about the lecture. This is the work of your brain. Not just sit. As your teacher is giving you the lecture or as you are engaging with the text, what you have to do is think about what you are listening. Think about what you are reading. That will help you to focus or not get easily distracted. Think about the lecture. Ask questions. I say asking questions is almost like a key to our mind. When we are just engaging in, in conversation without asking questions, and if we engage in conversation or discussion, after we ask questions, the strength of our concentration is very much different. different. Why? The time we ask questions, it, it feels like our mind is more open to learn. Therefore, you need to train yourself to ask substantial, constructive, and engaging questions as you are in your class. And then, take notes. That is also the activity of your hand and the activity of your mind, your eyes. All your senses will be at work. That helps to focus in the class. And then, track your lack of attention. What does it mean? I sit down and listen to a lecture, and of course I can't help it, but sometimes I wander here and there in my thought. And then what I say here is track it, track. What subject were you thinking when you were off during your class time? Write down. What were you thinking? What distracted you? And then when you track that, when you give it more attention for the things that are distracting you, you will have more power to ignore them. Later on, maybe if I, if I have time, I will explain to you about ignoring. Then, visualize. This is the act of your mind, okay? As the lecture is going on, you will visualize that idea so that you may have a better grasp. Find your peak hour. Everybody will not be focused 24 hours a day. Say, for example, in, case, in the case of mine, Morning time is not a good time for me. If I have very serious things that I have to do, some research works or writing articles or book chapters, whatever I have to do, I take it to after midnight. That is me. I don't recommend you. What I say is find the peak hour of your concentration. When is your mind focusing better, and then hard works needed to be preserved for, the, for that time. And then, of course, avoid multitasking. We cannot do so many things at a time because our brain needs to focus. Therefore, try to reduce down the amount of works that you are doing at the same time, okay? This is very much natural. Our mind is limited. Then, treat your mind like what? like muscle. I'm here. If you just listen. Okay, let's read it. One, two. Treat your mind like a muscle. That means if you want to have a very strong muscle, you need to have a regular exercise. Right? If you want to understand that, ask Mr. Tommy. Right? <laughs> exercise. Then you will have a very strong muscle. Concentrate. Train your mind. Then you will have a better concentration. You will have a better Focus in classes. Build willpower and discipline. Avoid distractions. Leverage the power of habits. Practice what? Mindfulness and align your thought and actions. Actions and thoughts needs to match. Okay, I don't have time. There is one uh, New, York's, uh, New York Times bestseller book written by Daniel Goldman. The title of the book says, Focus, the Hidden driver of excellence. In fact, this man is from uh, Harvard University, and he also have another New York, uh, uh, New York Times bestseller books like uh, Emotional Intelligence, Social Intelligence. I'm pretty sure um, you are familiar with this book. I really recommend, if you have the time and the access to read this book. The book has about nine chapters, and it helps people to enhance the skill of their focus. How can we focus? According to the author, he gives us three things. Number one, by being mindful. Be mindful. Two, 
be positive thinker. And the third one, have focus preparation. It is possible to train willpower like we are training our muscle, but it's, it, it requires effort. High performance in class or in life in general requires attention. Since mind is too busy to respond to much stimuli, mostly people have partial attention. Now we don't have any measurement unit, but you can somehow try to navigate, am I having a partial attention? How much focused I am? If I am having partial attention, what are some of the things that distract me in a, a, in a given context? It could be in a church, in a lecture hall, classrooms, whatever. Even in a house, in your house, as you are doing uh, uh, educational activities. People usually carelessly leap from one thing to another. We have so many thoughts. Our brain never rests. We think this one and then that one and then that one and at the end of the day there is nothing that we can even remember. That is the tendency of leaping. Here, we need strong selective attention. Now when we say here selective, according to the book, it's a deliberate, it's a deliberate what? Action, decision that you will decide deliberately on what to focus. As a cameraman, should know the focal point and concentrate the lens in a very specific object to have a high quality resolution picture. We needed to know how to uh, select deliberately. We needed to choose what to concentrate on. And then this requires not just selecting, it also requires what? Ignoring potential distractions. This is also another skill that we needed to develop. There is something that distracts me. I cannot avoid it. And then what shall we do? We needed to ignore it. I also have a, a habit of studying a very intensive study in cafes in Korea. You know, you know, cafeterias, like different kinds of uh, uh, coffee shops. Very noisy. Music is there. K-pop, whatever. But you know what I do? I select what I need to focus on, and then I ignore every noises as if nothing happened, and I'll just focus on the text that I am reading. For example, what are some of the things that will distract our attention? Or what can we avoid? We need to avoid daydreaming while in class, or stop time-wasting activities. Choose ignoring external distractions and accomplish our tasks. So this is like you are ignoring at one side, in the other dimension, you will also focus on your task. Distractions have the potential to, one, waste our time, two, reduce our productivity, and three, diminish our ability. Some philosophers, when they define evil, they say it is producing less than our potential. Evil is producing, being productive less than our potential. This is a philosophical definition. When, uh, if we are distracted, we waste our time. We reduce our productivity and also we diminish our ability. I told you like it's like a muscle. If mind is not productive, it is not using time properly. And also if we are not engaging, ability dies. As a student, we need to ignore distractions and focus well in class. Ability to focus enables us to get into a flow of a state. A flow of state, that means like a motion. It enables us to perform better. Every time we needed to consider the potential given from God to us. Therefore, we need always room to improve our performance. But one had to choose to pay attention. That is a kind of push and pull process. Everything that I have mentioned after I show you the cover of the book is taken from the book that I have mentioned to you. What is this push and pull process? 
You see, as you sit in the class, a lot of things are happening in just one class hour. What is this uh, push and pull? According to the book, it's bottom up mind and top down mind. They are pulling and pushing each other. When it says bottom up mind, it is referring to automatic and uh, routine mental activity that we don't even to think intensively. We just do it without thinking as a habit. And then the second one, top down mind, is when we are using our mind and our brain to plan, reflect on our plan, learn skill, which requires voluntary attention and self-control. So in almost every activity, brain is actively getting involved. It's not just a routine, it's not just automatic, but brain is involved. There is a reason why you, why you do that. And this kind of pull and push is happening, but the recommendation is to also use our top-down mind during class. Attention is almost like a, an open awareness. It is vital for our creative breakthrough. It opens awarenesses when we have this um, uh, open awareness that the opportunity for us to, to, not, to not wandering endlessly, but somehow have the freedom to wander towards something valuable. This wander towards some valuable is a repeated grace and observation while it is open because it gives you freedom. If you choose by yourself something, you almost declare your freedom. No one is imposing, but you choose to do it because we, you select your concentration, then it's not a burden. It's not because your parents or your teachers are telling you to focus, but it, it is your choice. Then there is an open awareness, a wandering area. Of, you will just wander around very much valuable stuff. Create a moment when we are alone and able to slow down and reflect. I remember once I went to um, UK and I was sitting on an uh, upstairs of one uh, burger house and I was, as I was looking down to the streets of London, I was very much surprised how much so fast is the movement. Everybody is running, the traffic is amazing. It's like spinning. And I say like, is it possible to not run or spin like all these people? Take your private time to reflect on yourself. I even took a video actually, the speed is amazing. And probably I, I think it's the same thing if you go downtown Seoul. Everybody is so much busy running here and there. It's spinning. But now, if you want to train your mind, what you have to do is create a moment when we are alone, sit down and slow down and try to reflect on each and every activities of our life. Open awareness enables us to be creative. Then we will have the opportunity to come up with an original thought. You know, coming up with original application points, original thoughts, original theories, it needs time. It needs quiet time so that you may use the maximum level of your potential by giving concentration. Open awareness enables us to be creative and be receptive to new ideas. It helps to imagine future scenarios. Proactively, you can imagine what is going to happen. Almost this is prophetic. It will help you to have self-reflection, develop creative ideas, and organize our memories. Focus on improving your willpower. Focus, have motivation, have determination. And for that, actually willpower is very much related with doing what you want, what you love. What does the Bible say about concentration? I have three verses, let's read it. Let's read it together, one, two, three. Fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
Just look what I highlighted here. Fix your eyes. Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. Second one. Let's read it. One, two, three. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Look the gaze. Focus. The last one. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Even in our Christian life, we are asked to focus on our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. It is my wish and prayer for all of us in the future to increase the quality of our concentration so that we may enjoy a quality life. Amen? Let us pray.